Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching on the camera, to the saints scattered around the world that we don't even know about. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All righty. So last week we talked about Yahushua, right? We talked a little bit about Yahushua and a little bit about John the Baptist. Remember, John the Baptist, he he had been given the prophecy of saying, listen, the person that you see where the spirit rests on him like a dove, that's the Messiah. But remember, it's just he got a prophecy. Remember, the most high God, when he speak to a prophet, he speak to him how? Through metaphor, but no, through a vision and a dream. He said he speaks to him through a vision and a dream. And he gives them what the book calls dark sayings. Right? So what that means is they don't see things clearly, right? They get a message, but things are not very clear. Right? But with Moses, it was different. With Moses, he spoke to Moses face to face. Right? When he spoke to us from uh Mount Sinai, he said he spoke to us face to face, right? Because he just spoke clearly to it. Like, yo, this is exactly what the commandment is. You know what I'm saying? This is exactly what you need to do. And I'm telling you directly, right? When he speak to Yahushua, it's the same way, right? Face to face, right? But to John, that's not the case. So we don't know exactly what John saw, but what he got from it was the one who the spirit rests on, that's the one. Right. When it rests on him like a dove, that's the one. So when John was looking around, he baptizing people. You remember John was famous. Everybody was coming to John. Right. He is out there by the Jordan River. Right. And so everybody would leave Jerusalem and all all the places around the, the, the uh, all the places around Israel. And then they would go to, to John. John would be baptizing people and telling people to repent. Pretty much. He's he's like starting out the gospel teaching, like bear fruit worthy of repentance. In other words, Turn around from what you used to do, stop sinning, and have behavior that's clear that we can say this person turned from their sin. Right? So John is teaching that and he's baptizing people. Then Yahushua will pop up one day. He look at him like, you seem special, you know what I'm saying? Like, is you the one? Yahushua was like, man, go ahead, let's get this done. Then he baptized him and the spear rest on him like a dove. So after that, John is excited. Right, we were read last week. John was pointing like, "Oh, this is him, the Lamb of God." You know what I'm saying? He pointed to him like, "This is him." So who were like right after that? Y'all remember that all the all not all, but a couple of his disciples looked at him and was like, oh, "Okay, well, we're about to start following him then. If this is the Messiah, if you telling us this is the Messiah, well then I'm just about to start following him." So they start following him. Then after they start following him, they they all start telling people, you know, whispers. But remember, this is up north. In Capernaum. No, not necessarily Capernaum, but in Galilee, right? And remember, Galilee is like the slums, right? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody, you know what I'm saying? People, people in Galilee, we not really looking at y'all like y'all the smartest people, like y'all got money. Y'all really don't, you know what I'm saying? You go to Jerusalem when you want the 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 elite, right? The upper echelon of people, the high thinkers, right? The high-minded people. You know what I'm saying? When you want to learn something, you want to make sure something is right, you go to Jerusalem, right? So think of Jerusalem as like Washington, D.C. You know what I'm saying? Think of Jerusalem as like New York City. You know what I'm saying? Southern California or, or uh, San Francisco or something where it's like, that's the tech industry. That's where the politicians be. That's where, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's Jerusalem where all the respectable, powerful people are. You know what I'm saying? And then you got, you got, you got Galilee Galilee is like, you know what I'm saying, the middle America. You know what I'm saying? That's the part where everybody forget. Like if Trump was running in uh if Trump was running in uh Israel, you know what I'm saying, at this time, 
You know what I'm saying? Like the people in Galilee would be MAGA. You know what I'm saying? The people, you know what I'm saying? The people, the people over in uh the people over in Jerusalem, you know what I'm saying? They, you know what I'm saying, they be, you know what I'm saying, just anything but Trump. You know what I'm saying? Vote for Biden, vote blue, and no matter who, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff, that would be them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the different, the different, the different sides of society, you know what I'm saying, were there. So they were looking at the people in Galilee like y'all ain't nothing. So this is all happening in Galilee, right? John said, that's the Lamb of God. People followed him to, to Galilee. And they looking like, okay, well, I'm going to follow him. Because they asked, y'all remember, he ran up on him. And he was like, yo, 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 like, where do you dwell? Y'all, she was like, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you just come see? And so they start following him. So they took him. He took him back home to Galilee. And then all the whispers are going on in Galilee. So they whispering to each other and like, yo, you know what I'm saying? You heard about the Messiah? Come here, follow me. I'm going to show it to you. So everybody going. Then Nathaniel, he's looking like Messiah from where? From, from Galilee? You know what I'm saying? Oh, tell, look, ain't nothing coming from Nazareth. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't, no, ain't no Messiah coming. What good comes from Nazareth? Right? Is what he was coming up. That, 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 that was his mindset. Then the Messiah saw him. He was like, yeah, I remember when you was under that fig tree. He was looking like, man, I didn't know nobody knew I was a fig tree. Based off of that alone, he was looking like, oh, no, this man know what he's talking about. Right? This the son of God. He, he gave it up just off of that. He was like, yeah, this is the son of God. Ain't nobody know I was under that fig tree. This the son of God, right? Then the Most High God, I mean, uh, 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 the Messiah was sitting there. He's looking like, oh, you that's all it took? Oh, you about to see some crazy stuff. You about to see, you know what I'm saying, the angels going up and down on me like, uh, you know what I'm saying, like a ladder. He didn't say it exactly, but, you know what I'm saying, he, uh, he referenced the prophecy uh, that Jacob had, Genesis, right? So we got to see, like, the beginning of the Messiah's like maturation, right? When people started to notice him. And it, I just want y'all to remember, it's all based off of John. John had a vision. Again, John don't know this for sure. He just know I got this prophecy and this man lined up with the prophecy. That's important to remember that it's not, it's not like completely drop dead obvious to anybody. It's just people looking at signs. And John looked at the sign and said, I saw the spirit. I saw a vision of the spirit rest on him like a dove. This has to be him. So he started pointing to him like, look, this is him. This is the lamb of God. This is, this is our Passover lamb. It's pretty much what he's telling us. This is the lamb that's going to cause the wrath of God to pass over us. This is the lamb of God is what he's telling us, right? And so all that is happening. And Yahushua started doing a couple miracles. Remember, his mama made him, you know what I'm saying, do the miracles. Uh, with the uh, with the turning the water and the wine, he went down. Uh, he went down into uh, the Jerusalem for Passover. He flipping over tables, whipping people on their door. You know what I'm saying? Whipping them like, man, if y'all don't, you know what I'm saying? If y'all don't stop selling stuff, you know what I'm saying? Making merchandise in my my father's house. You know what I'm saying? He tripping out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and uh, I'm trying to think what else happened. Um, I think that's about it, right? That's probably where we ended off. So. Um, we're going to pick up from there in John chapter three, we're about to go to John chapter three. We're going to start at verse one. Um, and we're going to see at this point, right. Just set kind of to set the stage. Remember he went down to Jerusalem for Passover. It ended off where he went to the temple and remember they were selling, uh, animals so that they could be sacrificed. Right. So he chased them out of the temple and the people start asking them, like, give us a sign. And he was like, look, tear down this temple in three days, I'll rebuild it. Right? I'll rebuild this thing in three days. And they were looking like it took 46 years to rebuild this thing. How are you going to rebuild it in three days? Right? So that's the setting is he is in Jerusalem. Right? And remember, Jerusalem is like our capital. Jerusalem is like the main city, the main place to be. It's like a New York City or a Washington, D.C. is where everything is happening. Right? It's the main place to be. It's where everybody want to be, right? So we in Jerusalem right now, uh, Yahushua walking around, and then we're going to kind of see the next interaction when the night goes, you know what I'm saying, when the, when the sun goes down. This is uh, John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the, a ruler of the Jews. Mm -hmm. The same came to Yahushua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do the miracles that you do except God be with him. Right. So he came to him and he came to him at night 
And he said, listen, it's impossible that you're not from God because I ain't never seen nobody do the stuff that you do. Right. Because they've at this point, remember, we read in chapter two, it didn't get give us specifics, but it told us that he was doing miracles. So the people were starting to believe on him because they seeing that he doing some stuff is like, I ain't never seen nobody do none of this stuff. Right. I've never seen this. This guy got to be from God. So now Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He came at night to talk to Yahushua. He looking like, look. Now we know. So it ain't just Nicodemus, it's other people too. But just pay attention that he came at night. We know that you come from God because can't nobody do the stuff you be doing. Watch this. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said unto him. So I want y'all to like take that in. I want y'all to like take that in and really like, like it's, we, we have been Christianized and we have been, you know what I'm saying? We're familiar with these stories. We're familiar with the Bible. So it desensitizes us to what is actually being said, right? But you got to like, you got to clear your mind and act like you don't know nothing. And then put yourself in Nicodemus' shoes. So Nicodemus, right? It's an uproar in the city about who this guy is. That's the guy. Never heard of this man. He's up from uptown in Galilee, that nasty, dirty, the dirty slums, right? The boy from the hood, right? He come down out of nowhere and he start flipping over tables and people is calling him the Messiah. I've never seen this black boy. I've never heard of him, right? Hair probably nappy. You know what I'm saying? That boy flipping over tables, trying to whip people, but he act like he got some real authority. Like the way he act, it's like he got some real authority. The way he talked, he talked like he got, he talked like he know what he's talking about. But I never heard of him. He ain't never learned around here. I'm trying to figure out who this man is, right? But this is the upper echelons of people, right? These are the people that know. These are the people that got all the prestige, right? So they going, it's, a, it's already like, it's already in the city, like some people who believe he's the Messiah. But most of those people are the people from Galilee. So it's like, we don't respect y'all. And you got a lot of people that don't believe he's the Messiah. So Nicodemus come in like, ain't nobody looking, right? Okay, let me talk to you. Look, I know you got to, you know what I'm saying? I know you come from, I don't know if you're the Messiah, but I know whatever you're doing, you come from God, right? He's just looking like, I don't believe that any old body could do all this stuff that you're doing. You know what I'm saying? It got to be from God, right? So then y'all sure just responded to him. Read it again, because I want y'all to understand, like, Nicodemus is clearly coming in there to try to figure out who this guy is. So he did come and try to offer some respect. Like, listen, look, ain't nobody around. Look, so look, I know you come from God. You know what I'm saying? Read it again. I just want y'all to see. Picture, picture what Nicodemus is there for versus how Yahushua responds to him. And Yahushua answered and said unto him. No, no, no. Go back. I want to read. Start with Nicodemus. Start with verse 1. And the same came to Yahushua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Right? So he just let, he coming to him with respect. Like, listen, I know you a teacher that come from God. I don't know if you're the Messiah. These, some of these people calling you the Messiah. I don't know that about you. But let me tell you what I do. I'll give you this. You a teacher, because I heard him talk. I heard him talk, and this man, look, this man talk like, you know what I'm He talked that talk. He know what he's talking about. Right. So I know you're a teacher and I know you come from God because I ain't never seen nobody do these miracles. You doing some wild stuff out there. It ain't no way that I come from anywhere but God. Right. So he's looking like I know you're a teacher. I don't know if you're the Messiah now, but I know you're a teacher. I know you come from God. Right. What else? For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And y'all sure, and, and sure now that's all him. Nicodemus said. He came to him with respect. He just trying to show him, like, listen, I I give you, I give you that. That's pretty much what Nicodemus. I don't, it's a whole uproar whether you're the Messiah or not. I look, I'm not getting into that. I know you special. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know you're different. I know that you are special and you come from the most high God. You just tell me who you are, right? So he just coming to him with respect, but watch how y'all sure respond. Think about what Nicodemus just said, and then watch how Yahushua respond. 
Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Imagine having this conversation. You come in and you trying to show your man respect. Like, man, listen, now you a bad boy. You a bad boy. I know they, they arguing about who you are. I'm, I don't know. I ain't in the fight. I'm just letting you know you special, dog. For real. You know what I'm saying? You a real dude. And then dude turn around to you and be like, yeah, you have to be born a second time. Like, what in the world is wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? Like, who, what are you talking about? I'm coming to you trying to show you some respect, this, that, nothing. And you telling me I got to come out my mom's womb again? You sound nuts. You sound crazy to me. Right? So it's like, we look at it and he say that. And we look at it now because we've been so desensitized and Christianized. We sitting there like, that Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That Jesus is just so wise. But no, in reality, if you don't know nothing about what he's talking about, which nobody would, you looking at him like, what are you? I'm talking to you about you being a teacher that come from God. And you talking to me about birth. You know what I'm saying? Going people, Women going into labor a second time. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So now watch how Nicodemus respond. Y'all, she was like, listen, no man. What do you say? Read it again. I'm saying to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Right? So Nicodemus is like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you mean born again? Like, I, I'm already like a per everybody. How can a man who's old go into his mom's womb and come out again. That doesn't make sense to me. Right? So watch what y'all sure say. Remember, this Nicodemus just came in there trying to find out who he is. Y'all sure ignored everything he said and just took a shot right across like, okay, yeah, you know, you got to be born again though. And this is a term that nobody's heard of, like born again. This is not, this is not a no, like what do you mean born again? What does that mean? What do you mean born again? So he's like, okay, so how you going to be born again when you, oh, I, I got to climb back in my mama's womb? You sound nuts. Right? Then watch what Yahushua say. So Yahushua shifted the whole conversation to where he wanted it. It's all about, when you watch and read Yahushua, it's all about focus. You asking me the wrong, you coming in here talking to me about the wrong thing. Right? Cut to the chase. Let's get to what matters. If you want to see the kingdom, I know why you're here. Because you want to see the kingdom. You got to be born again. He already know he's going to ask him, like, what does that mean? Let's watch, let's watch it. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Right? Yeah. So now he hit him with another. It's like a riddle. Right? So first thing, you got to be born again. Born again? I'm a grown man. What does, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? How do I, how me as a grown man get born again? He asked the question. Y'all sure say, well, unless you born the water and the spirit, you know what I'm saying? You ain't going to, what do you say? You ain't going to see the kingdom? You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Yeah, you can't enter into the kingdom if you don't see the, you don't see, you, don't, you ain't born by the water and by the spirit. So now Nicodemus is like, okay, so you talk. So when they say the water, just so y'all know, you know how your mama water break, you know what I'm saying? Or a woman's water break, you know what I'm saying? So that's what you born of the water. And then the spirit is talking about being born again and resurrected through the messiah right but again at this point nobody really knows exactly what he's talking about he's just talking one-on-one -on -one to nicodemus telling them you know what i'm saying well look you got to be born of the water and the spirit right but that signifies to nicodemus that he's talking about two di very different types of births right a natural birth and then some spiritual birth right so watch this keep going now y'all sure about to teach. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. But he like, don't look crazy. Because you can imagine ahead. Nicodemus is sitting there like, like with his face like, okay, what, what are you talking about, right? So y'all sure respond. He's like, oh, don't be surprised. You know what I'm saying? When he say Marvel not, he like, oh, don't be surprised that I told you you got to be born again. Watch this. Keep going. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou right, so he said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. Where it say listeth, think it out of saying, the wind blows wherever it wants to. Right, that's another, like when it said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. It's like saying, the wind blow wherever it want to blow. 
right? Keep going. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell from where it comes. Right? It so when, when, you, the, when the wind is blowing, you can hear the sound of the wind. You know how the wind be blowing real hard, and it sounds like it's a whistle outside? You know what I'm saying? Like a whistle outside your windows or something like that? Because you can hear the sound of the wind, of the wind hitting the window and hitting the crevices, and it starts to make the noise. It's ooh, and then a You know what I'm saying? It got a little whistle to it, right? You can hear the sound. You know the wind is blowing because you can hear the sound of it. But you don't know just by looking where it came from, right? You don't know. Like, you can't just look at the wind. Ain't nothing blowing. Ain't nothing. You can't just look at the wind and just be like, it's coming from over there. Just by looking at it. You inside the house, looking at the window. Ain't no trees or nothing blowing. So you can't tell. You can't just look. You can't see the wind. It's invisible. So he's telling you the wind blow wherever it wants to. And you can hear it, but you can't see it. Right? Watch this. Keep going. But cannot tell where it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So he's telling you, look, if you born of the flesh, that's one thing. But he said being born of the spirit is a different thing. Being born of the spirit is like it's like wind because you can't see wind. And you don't know where it came from or where it's going. All you can do is hear. You can just hear it. And that's how it is for everyone who's born of the spirit. Right. We're going to break that down to understand what he's saying. But this is how he's talking to people. Right. If you hear that, even with me just saying that, I've already broken it down a little bit, but still the average person going to hear that and be like, I still don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I hear exactly what you're saying. I still have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea what that means. I do want to see the kingdom. I really just came here trying to show you some respect. But now we hear, and you talk to me about wind and water and being born a second time, going to my mama's womb. I don't know what's happening right now. I don't get it. Right? But y'all should keep teaching. Watch this. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Yahshua answered and said unto him, Are you a master of Israel and knowest not these things? So now he took a shot at him, right? Next thing he did is took a shot at him. He looking like, Oh, you you a teacher out here, ain't you? Right? So hold on, let me get this straight. You are a teacher of all of Israel, and you don't know what I'm talking about. This is confusing to you. So now you can see why Yahushua took this approach with him. He's humbling him. Right? Nicodemus is a Pharisee. He's a teacher of our people. So he come in there thinking that he doing Yahushua a favor. Think about it. He come in there thinking, hey, look, look, I know. Look, I know you come. From God. I know people argue. I'll I give you that. You come from God. I don't know if you're the Messiah. He didn't say that, but you could tell that's his attitude. Like, I give you that. You doing these miracles. So, like, you special. But it's like, he think he doing Yah Yahushua a favor, right? Just like, let me give you, you know what I'm saying, the respect that some of these, some of my counterparts are not giving you. Let me just give it to you. Like, boy, you're not giving me anything. So Yahushua skipped that whole conversation and went straight to the meat, right? And, and spoke to him in parables in a way that he wouldn't understand. So now it humbles him. Then he straight out, just flat out tell him, like, oh, you a teacher of Israel? You know what I'm saying? Like, you a teacher out here in these streets? And you don't know what I'm talking about? Watch this. Watch him keep teaching. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen. And ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Even right, the he said, is in how heaven. are you going to understand heavenly things, right? If you don't understand the earthly thing, he said, look, the stuff I'm explaining to you is stuff that's going to happen right here. These are earthly things. How are you going to understand when I really get to talking? So you see what he's doing to him. He's humbling them. He's, he's telling them like, I know you think you're a teacher. Well, you don't know nothing out here. You don't. There's so much you don't know. You need to learn from me, 
right? He's saying that to him without telling him. He looks like, man, I'm telling you earthly things. Just imagine the conversation. You the man. You Nicodemus, a Pharisee. You're in Jerusalem. You talking to a man from Galilee. People don't even respect this dude, but some people think he, you know what I'm saying, the Messiah. You come in there and you think like, listen, I'll give you I, I, I'll give you this. You special. You special. I ain't never seen nobody doing nothing to such. So you definitely a special boy. He look at him like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You got to be born again. You know what I'm saying? Just, just play him out. You got to be born again. What do you mean born again? What do you like, I got to go into the womb a second time. You born of the water. You got to be born of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? What's flesh is flesh now, boy. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> what's flesh is flesh now, boy. You know what I'm saying? After that, you know what I'm saying? Got to be spirit. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, then it's like, how can these things be? You know what I'm saying? Like, so hold on. Help me understand that. I get this, me. Then he's stopping and looking. You can just imagine y'all she was just stopping. Then looking at him like, where you from? You don't know gay. You know what I'm saying? Like, you from Israel and you, you a teacher in Israel. You, you, you teach. You the one teaching these people? And you don't know what I'm talking about. If I'm telling you earthly things and you don't understand it, how you going to understand when I get to talking for real? Right? So now it takes Nicodemus from being like, hey, I'm coming in here and I'm trying to give you respect to just help me. Like, I just I just need help. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell me whatever I need to know. Right? So now y'all are about to get into it. Watch this. And notice, make sure you tell the kids over there, notice he said, no man has ascended up into heaven except he that came down from heaven. So mm -hmm. that kills the whole when you die, you go to heaven, man. Right. And no man has ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Right. So what is he what is he talking about when he says that no man has ascended up into heaven except for the man that came down from heaven? What is he talking about? Talking about himself. He's talking about himself, but he's referring to the prophecy that came from Daniel. Y'all remember it? Grab a, uh, what is it, Daniel 7? Try Daniel 7. <laughs> One says Daniel chapter 7, maybe verse 31. <laughs> It ain't 31, it's 13. Give I me saw verse the seven. night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Right? So this is the vision that Daniel saw, the Son of Man coming from heaven. Right? So now what he's doing is he's now referencing that. He's like, nobody ascends to heaven except the Son of Man who comes from heaven. That's why he speaks about it in past tense, right? Because he's talking about the vision that Daniel had. So he's basically saying the only, the son of man that, that Daniel saw in that vision is the only one, you know what I'm saying, that can ascend to heaven because he came down. The one that came down, the same one that can go up, right? Keep, uh, jump back over to, uh, to John chapter three. What verse is that? Seven and nine? Uh, we on 13. 13. This is John chapter 3, verse 13. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Right. Yeah. So he said the same way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, that's the same way that the Son of Man have to be lifted up. Right. So again. You have to think about this from Nicodemus' stand standpoint, right? Nicodemus coming there trying to show respect. Most high God son him, right? The most high God make him feel small, right? He's looking like, you know what I'm saying? You don't know these things? How you going to, whew, I got a lot of work ahead of you. You know what I'm saying? Y'all sure being dramatic. He, whew, I got a lot of work ahead of me. You, you don't understand the earthly thing. How you going to, when I really get to talking, how you, oh, my goodness. Okay, let me, let me just break it down to you. So, you want to you see the kingdom, right? Okay. The kingdom is really up there. 
there's no way for you to ascend up there because the only person that ascend is the same one that comes down. So you looking like you looking in the whole other wrong direction. He's referencing Daniel. Daniel prophecy we just read says the son of man. So then the next thing he says after that is the son of man. Read it again. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. So he's saying the he's not look just be very he's not clearly calling himself the messiah i, I want that to be very clear to y'all like he's not saying i have to be lifted up right we when we read the bible today that's how we read it just because we've been christianized and we've been familiar with the bible and these stories been told to us and all that right but i want y'all to remove that stuff from your head and just take it exactly how he's saying it he's not saying he let me be clear too because i know it's some hebrew israelites on here that don't believe he's the messiah see yeah, the brother's talking the truth. He ain't the Messiah. That's not what I'm saying. He is the Messiah. But I want y'all to see that he's purposely not just saying, hey, I'm the Messiah, everyone. It's intentional that he's leaving it ambiguous where people can have this argument like, is he the Messiah? Is he not? He's doing that on purpose. So now when he talks, he's saying the son of man. The son of man must be lifted up. So that's going to leave Nicodemus to be like, OK, but are you him or not? Right. So he's like, man, just like Moses lifted up, uh, lifted up the serpent is the same way the son of man must be lifted up. Nicodemus would still be thinking about the prophecy of Daniel. OK, so what this because Nicodemus probably see him as a prophet already. So he's probably looking like, OK, so what the prophet this prophet Yahushua is telling me is that the son of man that Daniel prophesied about is the only one that can ascend to heaven. Okay, that makes sense. Then he's saying the son of man has to be lifted up the same way that Moses lifted up the serpent. I'm not sure if I follow. You know what I'm saying? So now y'all sure going to go further. Watch this. Any of y'all who ain't never heard what we reading from me right now or from another man of God that teach it correctly. It's about to change the whole way you look at all uh, John 3.16. You know what I'm saying? About to change the whole way you look at John 3.16. He so loved the world. He loved the world. Whatever. I, I don't even remember that thing. They didn't butcher this so darn bad. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> that whosoever believeth him, in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Right. Yeah. So what what's happening here is Yahushua is saying, listen, nobody can ascend to get to the kingdom. Right. I'm talking about spiritual things and the things that's up there. Nobody can go up there and get them except the man, the son of man who is in, you know, what I'm saying in heaven. Right. Who comes from heaven. So he's saying the same man, the son of man that Daniel saw is the only one that can go up there and get this information. This stuff is above your pay grade. Right. Then he says uh, the son of man has to be lifted up just like Moses lifted up the serpent. Then he says, because the same way. All right. Hold we got. Let's go get Moses. This is uh numbers. What? 20, 21. Uh, I think it's 21. Because Moses, Numbers 20 was when Moses got in trouble. So, yeah, give me Moses. I mean, give me Moses. Give me Numbers chapter 21. Give me probably <laughs> verse 1. Probably start off at verse 1. That's bad because we just read it. I should know. This is Numbers chapter 21. We're going to start at verse 1. Because I want y'all to see. He's speaking in he's speaking in scripture right now. He's not he's not talking like plainly. He's he's re everything that he's doing right now is referencing uh, scripture. But through referencing those scriptures, he's painting a picture. He's giving you like a, a idea of what he's talking about. Right. So he starts off with the prophecy that came from Daniel and Daniel saw somebody who looked like a human being. When they say son of man, that's another way of saying human being. So he's looking like. 
This is some special guy, but the guy looks like a human being. But he's coming from the cloud like the man is flying. Right? So this guy is in the, in the, in the, when they say heaven, it's not saying like God's dwelling place. When you read heaven in a book, it's talking about the sky. So it's like Daniel's looking up. Man, I saw a vision of like somebody that looked like a human being, but he's flying with the clouds and coming down. Right? And then he went to the ancient of days and the man ended up taking over everything. So this is a human being that rules the entire world. And that's what everybody is waiting on. That's what everybody understands to be the Messiah. That's the prophecy that everybody understands to be. That is the Messiah. That is the reason that we know our king, the son of David, is going to be in the flesh. And he's going to come to save us. But he's going to come with like miraculous power. Right. So that's what everybody is arguing about. Is this guy the son of man that Daniel prophesied about? That's what the argument is about. He come, Nicodemus come to him like, man, I at least know you a teacher. He's like, man, you got to be born again, right? Fast forward, he gets to this part and he tell him, okay, the son of man, the only one that can ascend, right? And just like Moses lifted the serpent, the son of man have to be lifted. So now he's taking two separate scriptures, right? And painting a picture with it. The first one is the son of man that came down from heaven is the only one that could actually go up into heaven, right? And then the next one he painted a picture with is, what Moses did in the wilderness is the same way the, saint, the son of man is going to be used for the whole world, right? So what Moses did in the wilderness for the Israelites is how the son of man is going to be used for the entire world, right? Let's see what Moses did so we can understand that picture. This is uh, Numbers chapter 21, verse 1. We'll do verse four. Verse four is Numbers chapter 21, verse four. And they journeyed from Mount Ohor, or by the way of Red Sea, to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Wherefore, or why, have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no right. Bread. So the, the people say they were discouraged. Because of what? Because of the way. Because of the way. Right? In other words, the path that they were on discouraged them. Right? So after that, they asked the question, why in the world did you take us from where we were so we could just die in the wilderness? Let's see. Keep going. For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. Mm -hmm. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much of the much of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, "We have sinned, for we have spoken against Yahuwah and against." So, well, you. well, hold on. What happened to most of Israel? Most of the people died. Much of the people died. Right. Much of the people. The whole. In other words. A whole bunch of people died when the Most High God sent these serpents against them. I want y'all to pay attention to exactly what's being said because this is what Yahushua is using to draw a parallel to to say this is how the Son of Man is going to be, right? So Moses, right, is out here. People is mumbling and grumbling. The Most High God sends fiery serpents, in other words, poisonous serpents, to, to bite their butts. And the people are dying from these serpent bites. A lot of them, right? It's a much of the people. A lot of people dying. People just drop it, right? Then watch what happened. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against Yahuwah and against you. Pray unto Yahuwah that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And so the people did Moses. what now? They complained and they asked Moses to pray for them. They repented, right? They complained at first. The serpents came out. Then after that, they said, okay, look, we sinned. You know what I'm saying? Just pray to the Most High God. Take this stuff away from us. I need y'all to see the order, right? People were discouraged because of the way. Then all of a sudden, they sinned. And then the serpents get out against their butt. 
much people die. A whole bunch of folks die. And then some of those that was left was like, listen, we messed up. We sinned. Please ask y'all to take these serpents away from us. And then what happens next? And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bidden when he looketh upon it shall live. So and hold on. Y'all didn't say, I must make the serpent stop biting y'all. Why didn't he say that? Instead, what he said is, all right, so when your butt do get bit, I'm going to have him make this, this, you know, serpent, this brass serpent. And when you look at it, you'll be healed. But he never stopped the bite. Never stopped the bite. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And everyone that has bitten, when he look at the punish, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on the pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So now, just by looking at this serpent, for those who repented, for those who said, listen, please let this go, Moses said, all right, just look at the serpent after you get bit. You still got to get bit. Now let's go back to what Yahushua is saying in John chapter 3, and let's see if we can make sense of it. This is John chapter 3, verse 15. <clears throat> verse 14. This is John chapter 3, verse 14. These people don't know no law. This is, you, can't, you can't really thoroughly teach the gospel until you understand the law. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So now the Son of Man got to be lifted up just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Watch this. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Right? So now the same way when you look at the serpent after you get bit, you can... Because after you get bit, what's going to happen if you don't look at that serpent? You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to perish. Right? So he's saying, he's saying now, just like that, when you look at the Son of Man, you don't perish. You will have eternal life. So you already bit. Right? The way that the Most High God operate, everybody is already bit by the snake. Everybody on their way to dying already. But the way he going to use the son of man is he going to lift them up so that everybody who look on him, just like the way that the Israelites looked on the on the serpent, everybody who look on the son of man can now have ever, everlasting life. Watch this. Keep going. For God so loved the world. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. So when he says, for God so loved the world. Right. So is not saying I love the world so much. I love the world to this great it's extent. An, it's not an amount. That's not what he's saying. It's more of a when he compare. says so he's saying I love the world like so. I love the world like like I loved the Israelites that Moses held the brass like serpent it. up for. He's saying. The same way that Moses held that brass serpent up is the same way I love the world. So in other words, I'm going to handle the world the same way that I handled Israel in the wilderness. Right? It's important to understand that because it changes everything. Israel in the wilderness still had to repent. Israel in the wilderness still got bit. And if Israel in the wilderness don't look to the son of man, I mean, it didn't look to the brass serpent. Israel in the wilderness had to die. And that's no different than what he's about to explain to us right now. Right. Remember, the serpent was going to bite your butt no matter what. By the time you look at that, that brass serpent, you were already bit. Right now, watch what y'all say. This is uh, John chapter three, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I can't think of what he's about to say next. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world... He didn't send the brass serpent. Him. He Look, he didn't send the brass serpent to bite the people. Right? He said he didn't send them to condemn the world because what? Um... 
God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Right? The brass serpent wasn't there to bite the people. Watch the next verse. Watch this. He that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already. You were already bit by the snakes. If you look on the brass serpent, then guess what? You'll live. But if you don't look at the uh, black brass serpent, guess what? Your butt was already bit. You've been bit. You've already been bit. Right? This is what Yahushua is explaining here. Nicodemus, because he knew the law, would have understood this. It's our people where we're not familiar with the law. Our people don't value the law. So now when these things are explained, we get to making up all types of, oh, God loved the world so much. He loved the white person and the black person. And the Mexican, he even likes the Cuban, and he likes the German, he likes all of us, the whole world, he loves you. So they get to teaching that in Sunday school, talking about God loves everybody. Is that what, is that what he said? You've never read that from him. I ask people all the time, I'd be like, show me one place in the Bible where God, they say God loves everybody. Oh, I'll show you just the place, brother. John 3.16, have you heard of it? Get out of my darn face talking to me. You don't know what John 316 talking about. You don't know what John 316 talking about. He talking to a man of the law. How you think? How do you you eavesdropping on a law keeping conversation and you going to run your mouth about what John shut your door, close your darn ears. You shouldn't even be listening to this conversation. Darn Christian. You look, you turn to the page in the Bible where Yah is talking to Christians. And when you find it, send it to me because you ain't going to find it. Right? What he's trying to do is he's telling you, he's looking like, listen, if you remember what Moses did to the Israelites when the serpents was getting them and he put the brass serpent up and they had to look after they was bit already, had to look at the brass serpent and then they could live. Well, guess what? That's what y'all going to do for the, will, uh, for the world because he didn't bring the brass serpent to condemn the Israelites, he brought the brass serpent to heal the Israelites after they was already bit. And I'm going to keep letting your butt get bit. I'm not going to stop him from biting you. You have to understand that. Like, you have to factor that into your loving God. Oh, God is so gracious and kind. That's true. Now you got to factor in that at any point, he, he sent the serpents to bite you. At any point, he could have just said, all right, serpents, start biting them. But instead of doing that, he felt it was best to say, Okay, Moses, feel the brass serpent. And for the ones that want to repent, or for the ones that want a way out of it, because they asked to take away the serpent. He didn't do that. So the ones that want a way out of it, have them look at the brass serpent and they'll live. It'll heal them. Because they was condemned already. They was already bit. That's what Yahushua sure is going to explain to us. Keep going. He, be, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believe not is condemned already because he has mm -hmm. not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Right. So when he says they are condemned already, then he goes on to define what does con what does he mean by condemned? So he said this is the condemnation that light came into the world and the people didn't like the light because their what was evil. Because their deeds were evil. It's always about behavior. When they say deeds, it's talking about your behavior, the things that you do. So it's saying people didn't like the light because the things of their, that they do are evil. At no point is this talking about unconditional love for people. Right? At every point, this is talking about your behavior. He said, look, if you don't get your act together, like the children of Israel got their act together, your butt already condemned. He's telling you, look, you, if you don't come to me and look into the light, you don't do that because your deeds are evil. What you do is wrong. Your butt is already condemned. Keep going. Watch this. For everyone that doeth evil hates the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Mm -hmm. But he that doeth truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. After these things, Yahushua and his disciples into the uh, in his after these things came Yahushua and his disciples into the land of Judah, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John in the also, land of what? In the land of Judah. Right? So now he's still in Judah. He left Jerusalem, but he's still in Judah. Right? And then there, 
You know what I'm saying? The book say he baptized, but watch this. And John also was baptizing in Anon near Salim because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all the men come to him. And John, right, so now look, he said, he said, he, so John is John is baptizing. Yahushua is baptizing nearby. They both in Judah because everybody in uh, everybody around Jerusalem at this point. So they both in Judah, and Yahushua and his disciples are baptizing, and John is baptizing. But remember, John is the man. Everybody know John. People just now starting to know Yahushua, and it's the poor people, it's the rats, it's the people that people don't really mess with like that. They're starting to know Yahushua. John got them all. Got him. John got him from all different white walks of life. Everybody know John is the man, right? So now his disciples is like, yo, 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 the dude that uh that you, you know what I'm saying, that you was talking about, the one that they think might be the Messiah, like he over there baptizing like you be baptized. Because if you look at it, John is the only person that's known for baptizing. Ain't nobody else known for baptizing. So it's like, is it that, that dude that you were talking about, he biting your style now. You know what I'm saying? He taking your he taking your sauce, bro. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you might want to get at him. So now watch what John say. And John I'll read that verse again, said, actually. And John is oh wait, and they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom you bear witness, behold, the same baptized, and all the men come to him. And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Messiah, but that I am sent before him. Either right, so now John had to clarify, like, what y'all, what y'all tripping on? Listen, the only way a good thing can happen, what he pretty much said is the only way a good thing can happen is if it came from y'all, right? Y'all heard me say I'm not the Messiah, right? So another way he trying to tell him, like, I'm not the one. It's gonna be him, right? Keep going though. He that has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He mm -hmm. that comes from above is above all, and he that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that comes from heaven is above all, and what he hath seen and heard, that he has testified, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that has received his testimony has set to his seal, has set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. The Father right, so he's telling you, he's looking like, look, this, look, the one that I'm trying to prepare y'all for is coming from heaven, right? He's like, the, the guy I'm telling you, he come from the sky. Again, referencing the, the son of man that came from heaven that Daniel prophesied about, right? So he's like, the one I'm telling you, God, he come from where God is, right? So like, who you think gonna have the authority when he come? When he come, Y'all read the prophecy from Daniel. He got authority over all of it. So he's like, he's trying, he's trying to explain to him, like, it wouldn't make sense for me to feel like he's stealing baptism from me when he's the one who runs the whole show. He can have whatever he wants. He got all the authority. I'm the one that got to decrease so that he can e increase. He's the one that got to take over this whole shebang, right? Keep going. Watch this. The father loveth the son and has given all things into his hand. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. That's it? Yeah. Yeah, so now John is trying to explain to them, like, this is the guy, right? I'm not mad at what he's doing because he's doing what he's supposed to do. I'm the one that got to chill. I'm the one that got to fall back, right? Go, uh... Uh, jump over to Luke chapter 3 real quick. This is Luke chapter 3. Give me verse 19. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. Wait, hold on. Go, uh, that was verse 19. Give me verse maybe 17. 
Well, hold on. Uh, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor. You want something? You want before that or no? You want 16. Oh, wait, no, we'll do 15. We'll do 15. Uh, Sister Pamela asked a question. She said the father and the son. So, Sister Pamela, the, that that is a valid question, but what we were just reading wasn't, wasn't the Messiah talking, right? So what we were just reading was John the Baptist talking. So John the Baptist was saying that he has to lessen himself for the Messiah. But it is also true that the son, right, the Messiah, has to lessen himself for Yah as well. But we'll get to that. We'll 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 talk about that once once we kind of cover that in the text. Yeah, the but, Messiah um, being a human being is lessening himself already. <laughs> yeah, but I think she asked like, why did he have to do that? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why is it set up that Yah had to make himself into a human being and then as a human being lessen himself to himself? You know what I'm saying? Because um, we did not oh. keep the thuggets, boy. Huh? Uh, who we broke the covenant. He had to make that thing, you know, he had to make everything true. He had to fulfill all righteousness. But that's yeah. the vague answer. So yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, we could, yeah, we could, we'll, we'll, we'll go. It's going, it's going to come up a couple times in the gospel. So We'll cover that, and uh, we'll definitely be diving into that question a lot deeper. And we can talk about it on the on the uh, on the Sabbath call tomorrow. Um, keep going. This is the, was it verse seventeen? I want it. You want fifteen? Luke chapter three, verse fifteen. And the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John whether he were the Messiah or not. Right. So everybody wanted all men. It says everybody was like. They think John is the Messiah. John is walking around telling you, oh, this is the son of this is the Lamb of God right here. This is the one I've been telling y'all whose shoes I can't even mess with. I can't even take his shoes off. Right. This is a bad boy right here. This is the son of man right here. This is him. So he's telling them that. But everybody kind of feeling like John is the one. So I want you all to understand how how respected John was. They think John is the Messiah. John has to keep telling them, I'm not the Messiah. Remember, we read, what was it, last week? We read last week and they asked them, are you the Messiah? Are you that prophet? Right? Are you, like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? He's like, man, I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? Also quoting scripture. Right? So keep going. And John answered saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water. But one mighty and an eye cometh, who the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Mm -hmm. And many other things in this in his ex exhortation preached he unto the people. But Herod, the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. Right. So in other words, John was prophesying against uh, Herod. And he was prophesying against Herod because Herod was like, you know what I'm saying? Herod took his brother's wife and, and was sleeping with her. And so John was calling him out like, man, you wrong for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's wrong. You shouldn't be doing that. And so Herod didn't like it. So Herod, Herod put John in prison. Right. Keep going. And when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Yahushua also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open and the Holy Ghost descended up in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, thou art my beloved son in thee. I am well pleased. Right. So this is just going over that again. I just wanted to get the part because we read in uh, we read in John three just now. Y'all might not have caught it, but it said before John was put in prison. So I want y'all I want y'all to see what happened shortly after that right so john when they was in judah right that's exactly where herod is also right so remember herod uh this is actually herod's herod's son that is talking about right now but if y'all remember herod was in judah because you remember he was looking for the messiah when he was first born right and he's like where are you supposed to be born they said bethlehem so he started killing all the little male children in bethlehem so herod is in judah 
So when John and when Yahushua are in Judah for the Passover and they both baptizing, John is there too. John is now starting to call out Herod and Herod put him in prison and he locked him up. So we're going to hear from John again, but we're not going to hear from John a lot at this point. So now John kind of kicked it off a little bit like, yo, this is the guy. But then it's locked up. And remember, there's no social media. It's not like somebody can share his post or anything like that. So now things get quiet. So now it's just Yahushua on his own. Again, this creates an environment for an argument. If John was walking next to Yahushua the whole time, it wouldn't be as much of an argument because everybody respected John. And John would have just been like, this the man right here. This the one I've been telling you all about. They would have been walking side by side. Everything would have been smooth. Everybody probably would have believed he is the Messiah. It would have changed everything. But y'all can't have that. Y'all want it to be an argument. Y'all want it to be kind of ambiguous. He wants you to pay attention to the signs. He don't want it to be easy. He wanted it to be somewhat somewhat challenging to try to figure this stuff out. Yeah, John because he, gave it away. Huh? Yeah, John would have gave it away. John, John would have gave it away. Because everybody, everybody already think John the Messiah. John's already been telling everybody, yo, it's going to be another one after me. And so if he walking right next to Yahushua, it just would have been like, yeah, this is the guy I've been telling you about. It's my man, Yahushua. Introduce yourself. It would have been easy. Everybody would have been like, yep, that's him. Then everybody would have believed him because everybody rocked with John. You notice there was nobody against John except for Herod. And Herod is an Edomite. Right? Herod, Herod didn't come from our people. Herod is an Edomite that worked for the Romans. I know you Hebrew Israelites think the Edomites and the Romans are the same thing. But anyway, Herod, Herod was an Edomite, right? He was from Edom. He was from our brother, our people, our brother's people. You know what I'm saying? So he, uh, he locked him up and put him in prison. So now we're going to hear from, we're going to hear from John less and less. But it's like that by design because the Most High God had to keep it ambiguous, right? For everything to play out the way the Most High God wanted to, he had to keep it ambiguous. So it was right that John had to go to prison. Keep uh uh actually not keep going. Go to where we at. So we just looked at John. Let's jump over to um we finished John three, right? Uh yeah. We let's jump to John four then. This is John chapter four, verse one. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Yahshua made uh, made and baptized more disciples than John, though Yahushua himself baptized not, but his disciples. He left. Right, Judah. so now it's clarifying for you that Yahushua didn't baptize nobody. That's important also. Right? Yahushua himself didn't baptize nobody. Right? A lot of people don't realize why that's important, but we'll talk about it. Right? But he himself didn't baptize nobody. His disciple, he gave the authority to his disciples to start baptizing people. And so when the Pharisees heard it, like, oh, he baptizing and more people is coming. So John is in the city. Yahushua is in the city. John is sending people to Yahushua. So now the Pharisees is hearing that, oh, Yahushua got a bigger crowd than John got. But that's only because John is like, nah, that's the boy, the one over there. Go talk to him. Right? So he looking like Yahushua looking like, I mean, uh, uh, John, uh, no, I'm sorry, the Pharisees are looking like, why Yahushua getting all this attention? Watch what he say. He left Judah and departed again into Galilee. And right? Left... So Yahushua is running from that attention. So he left Judah and he started headed to where? Galilee. So now he's going back home. You see how quickly in Judah it get popping? You know what I'm saying? Jerusalem? That thing get popping quick. This whole thing could have been over in one, you know what I'm saying, this first year. But he didn't do that. He was looking like, all right, too early. Let me go back home. It's getting too crazy here. The Pharisees on to me. They about to come look for me. Let me just go on back in Galilee. They ain't never going to come looking for me there. They don't mess with no Galilee. You know what I'm saying? They ain't never going to come looking there. Let me just take my butt back to Galilee. So he started heading back up to Galilee. But to get to Galilee, you got to pass through a place called Samaria. Watch this. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Right. So all this is the same land that if y'all, if y'all, those of us reading the Bible in a year, 
if y'all remember when we was in Genesis, that Jacob would would create wells, and then Isaac was making wells, and then uh, Abraham was setting up wells and everything also. So this, all this stuff that we reading right now, these are all the same lands that Isaac, I mean, the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were in, where it's setting up those wells. So now we walking through one of those portions of the land, and we got the Sumerians, and we read last week, and we read before also that remember Gentiles were put in Samaria. Samaria was um Samaria was the land of uh what's Ahab daddy name? Uh, Start with an O, right? Um, uh, was it Amri? Amri, Amri? No, I forgot his name. Yeah, not Man. Amri. Maybe it don't start with an O. Maybe I mess you up. What's in that now? It's about the bottom I think now. It, I think it start with an O. Now I got Now I got to get it. Hold on. Let me see. I I ain't supposed to forget. Uh, let me see here. Ba -ba Boom. Yeah. Ooh, doo -doo. All right, so we got all our kings right here. If it get on the right screen, sometimes it want to act up. That's all right. So we got all our all our kings here. So King Ahab right here. You right, it was Amri. Uh -huh. Um. So you got Amri, it, who is the father? Excuse me. Who Amri? Who is the father of uh, Ahab? So Amri, when Amri, King Amri came in, he's the king of the northern tribe. Right. When he came in, he made a place called Samaria. Right. And when he set up Samaria, it became the popping place for all of the, the Israelite kings or the kings of the northern tribe, rather. Right. So all the kings of the northern tribes, Samaria became the city of the kings. So exactly. Ahab continued it. Huh? It's like the Jerusalem of the north. It's like the Jerusalem. Yeah, it's kind of like the Jerusalem of the north. Right. So Samaria is a place in the northern tribes. So now we're walking through Samaria. So this place was known before for Israelites from the northern tribes. And when we say northern tribes, remember, our kingdoms got split after Solomon, King Solomon's sin. Our kingdoms got split. For the most part, it got split into two sections. So you had you had Ephraim, Reuben, Simeon, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Asher, Gad, Nephtali, and Manasseh. They all were considered the northern tribes, right? And they were given to a king named J Jeroboam, who was the first uh, northern tribe king of the split kingdoms, right? Then after that, you had uh, Judah that was maintained by, um, by uh, Solomon and his son, Rehoboam, right? And Benjamin stayed there, and most of the Levites decided to stay in Jerusalem because that's where the temple was, right? So you have pretty much the Levites, the Benjamins, uh, Benjamites, and uh, Judah that were in the southern kingdom, which is also called the kingdom of Judah, right? So everything kind of got split in that way. That's important to know because later on down the line, there was a king of Assyria who then took the 10 tribes that were up north, if they dwell anywhere in the northern tribe cities, they because they were seen as a separate kingdom, they, they conquered that kingdom, the northern tribes, and then they removed them from the land and put them into all these different places in the empire of Assyria. Then they took, the king of Assyria took Gentiles from all these wild places and placed the Gentiles in uh, Samaria. So they did a switcheroo pretty much. And they left the Gentiles in Samaria. So all these years, the Gentiles have been in Samaria. This is the same reason why when we was reading in Ezra and reading in Nehemiah, we had Gentiles in our land asking us, could they help us build? Could they help us fix the wall? Could they help us with all these different things and bothering us? Because these are the Gentiles that were in Samaria, right? Well, fast forward to what we're reading now. These Gentiles are still in Samaria. 
So Yahushua is about to pass through Samaria. The Christian teachers and the Christian pastors are going to tell you that the Samarians are half Jewish, which just, uh, it's just, uh, just disgusting, right? It's just like, you, y'all, just stop teaching this book. You know what I'm saying? Like, just stop. Just sit down. You're just making a mess, right? So they not half Jew. They not half Israelite. That's not even a, that concept doesn't even make sense for how our history works. You can't be a half Israelite. There's no such thing. Your daddy is an Israelite. You're a convert or you're not an Israelite. That's it. Right. Your dad's an Israelite. You're a comfort convert or you're not an Israelite. There's no other options. Right. So um, he's passing through Samaria. Samaria is filled with Gentiles. This is their area. Right. That hasn't changed. Watch this. <clears throat> then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Yahushua, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat on the wall, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water, and Yahushua said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask his drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For right. So if y'all remember, dead. this is similar to what um, what uh, the servant of Abraham did when he met uh, Isaac's wife, Rebecca. Right. He went to her and he was like, here, you know, give me something to drink because he made a pact. He said the woman that give me something to drink will be my 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 master's wife. Right. So he said, he said, give me something to drink, right? Watch this. Keep going. Oh, let me, let me uh, add another detail. When the most high God, when, when, when the king of Assyria did the switcheroo and they put Gentiles in there, the animals of the land kept eating up the people. I wonder if we can get this real quick. Yeah. The animals of the land kept eating up the people, eating up the Gentiles. And so them being superstitious, they were looking like, you know what? The God of this land is rejecting us because we're not keeping the God of this land's customs. So what they did, what the king of Assyria did, he said, okay, the Israelites that we took out of there, send them one of the priests that used to be there so they could teach them. The problem was Jeroboam, the king Jeroboam, made anybody who wanted to be a priest a priest, right? And so they weren't really teaching our law. They were teaching some morph version of our law kind of like what the Christians do, right? The Christians, like, they open the Bible, but their traditions and everything is different from what's in the Bible. Like, they keep it Christmas, they keep it Easter, and you can't find that stuff in the Bible. It's the same thing, right? You know what I'm saying? Resurrection Sunday where they chasing, chasing eggs. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing as what Jeroboam did to our people. Jeroboam was like, okay, let me create two extra days. Let me have y'all, just like the Christians have the cross. You know what I'm saying? Jeroboam was like, here, let me create these golden calves that y'all can worship these things and bow down to these things. Just like the Christian bow down to Mary and bow down to the cross and these Catholics and all this stuff. They all do all this wild stuff. So it's very similar to what you see in Christianity and what you see in Islam, where Islam, where they, they take this, this journey and they go to, uh, uh, to Mecca and then they, they kiss this black box. You know what I'm saying? That, that got this, you know what I'm saying? That, that got this little, part of it that looked like a lady part honestly you know what i'm saying they got a little part of it and then they try to get as close as they can to touch the little thing that looked like a lady part or to kiss the little thing that looked like a lady part so i feel like they all darn perverts if you ask me but they do that and it's idolatry the whole thing is just idolatry it's like oh i gotta touch this stone and i'll be blessed you've never seen that in the, in the book but they've added these things on and they built these traditions so in the same way Jeroboam added things on, built traditions, and he made anybody a priest. Our priest had to be of Levi and couldn't just be of Levi, had to be a son of Aaron, right? Because we know all the sons of Aaron are Levites also, but he had to be particularly a son of Aaron in order to be a priest, right? Their priest could be anybody, right? Anybody could, could, could potentially qualify to be a priest. So they sent one of their fake priests, one of the Northern Kingdom's fake priests, to go teach the Gentiles. So now the Gentiles is learning supposedly the customs of Yahuwah from a priest that don't really know the customs of Yahuwah. 
So they start to adopt part of our culture, but they don't really know what's really going on. Part of what Jeroboam said is, look, y'all don't need to go down into Jerusalem. Y'all can worship Yah in Bethel, or you can go worship Yah in Dan. So you're about to see that that's part of this lady's conversation because her traditions would have come from Jeroboam in the northern kingdom, whereas Yahushua's traditions is going to come from the true scripture and it's going to come from the most high God. All right, keep going. And the, the, then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that you being a Jew ask his drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Yahushua answered and said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee, give me to drink, thou would have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. And the woman said unto him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. From whence hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? So he now notice how she said our father Jacob, because she learned, she learned from our, our people, right? She learned from the northern kingdom's priests, right? So she looks, she looks at Jacob as her father. That's why these Christians, because they don't understand that piece. That's why the Christians say, oh, well, she must be half Jewish. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you just shut up. You don't know what you darn talking about, right? But that's what she's saying. She's saying our father because she's learning. She's learning about our history. She's learning about our scripture as if she was an Israelite also, but under the impression that she's doing it under the uh, under the guise of the northern kingdom, which already had a warped view of our law. All right, keep going. Yahshua answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. And y'all should have said, Watch it. Go call thy husband and come here. Right? So look, she he fine. Look, he's setting her up. So she started off, she's looking like, You ain't even got nothing. How you gonna, you know what I'm saying? How you gonna ask me for some water? You ain't even got nothing. I mean, uh, how I'm supposed to ask you for some water? You ain't even got nothing to draw with. Right? He, he looking like, yeah, nah, this water right here, I can give it to you. I can give you some of this water. Your butt gonna be thirsty again. Water I'm talking about, you ain't gonna never thirst again ever. He's looking like, oh, well, let me get some of that water. He's like, okay, go get your husband there. You know what I'm saying? You want some water? Go get your husband there. Watch what she say. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yeah, Watch what y'all sure will say. Yahushua said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband. And that say, in that sayest thou truly. Right? So now Yahushua calling her out. She said, I ain't got no husband. But think about, think about this, right? She thinks she, this is me imagining. She thinks she got her one. You know what I'm talking about? She walk up, you know what I'm saying? He looking like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You should have asked me for some water. Truth be told, right? He looked like, man, you ain't even got nothing to draw with. Then after that, you know what I'm saying? He looking like, so you got some water that I can live with. Let me have some of that water. He looking like, well, then go get your husband. Because at this point, she probably flirted. She probably like, you got a cute, honestly. One of them Hebrew boys, them dark Hebrew. She probably, she probably dark skinned too, but you know, she a Gentile. She a dark skinned Gentile. You probably looking like you one of these, you know what I'm saying? You one of these dark Hebrew boys, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you look all right. You know what I'm talking about? And y'all, she was like, okay, well, yeah, go get your husband. She was looking like, I ain't got no husband. Now, in her mind, she thinks she lying to him. Right? But y'all, she was like, yeah, you right. You ain't got no husband. Now, in her mind, she thinks she really do got a husband, but she trying to trick y'all, she was into thinking she don't got a husband. Y'all, she would call her out. You right. You spoke well when you said you ain't got no husband. Because you actually got five husbands, and the one that you with now ain't your husband. So now it's like, oh, I tried to lie to you, right? Because I was trying to make myself look single. Well, maybe I could get your number after this, and, you know, we can maybe hit it off with this, with this water that's going to make me, you know what I'm saying, this water I'm going to live forever on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want somebody that got some forever water. You know what I'm saying? So she's looking like, let me try to get this man number. 
He was like, yeah, go get your husband. Oh, yeah, you right you don't have a husband. You right. So she's looking like, but I kind of do have a husband. No, nah, you don't. The five husbands that you had and the one that you with right, right now, none of them is your husband. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Watch what she she, she say now. The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Art he looking like, boy, you must be a prophet because he caught, he read her. He called her right. So she's looking like, you must be a prophet of God. For you to know that about me, I've never met you. You don't know nothing about my family. For you to know that about me, you must be a prophet of the most high God. Watch this. Watch. So after she understands that he's a she's a prophet, he's a prophet, the next thing she wants to do is settle, settle the age-old argument between the Sumerians, the Gentile Sumerians, and the Israelites. Watch this. Our father is worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Right? Because remember, Jeroboam, when he took over the northern tribes, he told the people they didn't need to worship in Jerusalem, and he built altars for them, one in Bethel, right, which is southern, is which is the bottom end of the northern tribe, and then one in, uh, one in uh, Dan, which is way up north of the northern tribe, right? So he made it so that people didn't need to go to Jerusalem. So now she's saying, I perceive that you're a prophet. So let me ask you a question. Our father is talking about Jacob, right? Not really her father, but she, since she's adopted the tradition, she called him her, their father. Our father um, uh, worshipped in this mountain. But y'all say we should be worshipping in Jerusalem. Watch this. Yahshua said unto her woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Right? You He's saying, look, it's going to be a time where y'all ain't going to be worshipped here or Jerusalem. Right? Because he's prophesying. When he say that, he's prophesying a little bit after his death, the Romans came and they tore all of our stuff up and they tore down our temple. They got rid of all our stuff. They took all our artifacts and got who knows where they are now. They probably got them things sitting in the Catholic church somewhere hidden under under the ground and all that. Right. So all of our artifacts probably still exist right now. But they you know, what I'm saying who, who knows? It's probably the Romans that still have them to this day. Right. And so they took all of our stuff. Right. And shut everything down. So just like today, we're not worshiping Yah at our temple because our temple is gone. And so that's what he's saying. He's like the hour is going to come that neither in Jerusalem nor in this mountain, right, in Samaria, is y'all going to be worshipped. But watch what he tell her. Ye worship, ye worship, ye know not what. He said, ye worship, ye know not what. In other words, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're worshiping, right? So he's telling her, you have no idea what you're talking about. I know you're talking about this father, my father stuff. You're not us, first of all. And you have no idea what you're talking about. The way you learn the book, totally wrong you know what i'm saying watch this keep going we we know what we worship for salvation is of the jews he said salvation is of who the jews that got that that got that right it ain't of the sumerians it ain't of the jewish people it ain't of the christian it ain't of the, none of this stuff it is of the jews right not jewish it is of the jews of the hebrews of the israelites those that are descendants physically from Jacob and Isaac and Abraham. Right? Keep going. For the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called, well, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Messiah, when he comes. When, when he is come, he will tell us all things. And Yahshua said unto her, I that speak unto you, unto thee am he. Right? So he told the Gentile lady, remember, Nicodemus came to him, trying to find out, is he the Messiah? He didn't tell him Nicodemus. Right? But he told this woman right out, you know the Messiah coming, huh? You talking to him. He told her flat out, you're talking to him. And watch how this lady freak out. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet right? They looking me. like, wait a minute. Remember when she first came off, she was looking like, how you asked me for water? Because he asked her for water. She was looking like, how you asked me for water? You know that, you know that y'all Hebrews ain't got nothing to do with, you know what I'm saying? Hebrews don't like talking to us. 
Because we don't mess with the Gentiles. We saw, y'all, y'all remember, the Gentiles was picking at us. They were looking like, yeah, can we build this with you? Can we build the temple with you? We told them, like, no, nah, y'all ain't got no part in this. And then after that, the Gentiles tried to set us up, and they tried to get us to stop building. It took us 46 years to build that thing. Then the Gentile came back when we had building the wall, Nehemiah trying to build the wall, and they trying to kill, they trying to set Nehemiah up. They trying to kill him. They tried to, you know, threaten to, to, to knock us all off. We don't really mess with the Gentiles like that. We don't trust them. Remember, the Gentiles set us up. It was, it was the nations that were right around us that came and tore down our land on behalf of Babylon. So we got a long history of these Gentiles just not liking us and, and trying to set us up. So we don't really mess with Gentiles. So we looking like, no, nah, we walk through Samaria. We don't deal with Samarians. We don't talk to Samaritans. We don't do none of that stuff. Right. We relax. We do what we got to do. We focus on what we got. So she was like, oh, you know, y'all don't really mess with us like that. And you're going to ask me for water. So now when the disciples come, they see he in a deep conversation with this woman, telling her that, you know, what I'm saying, he the Messiah. And they looking like you talking to a Samaritan? Like, what? What is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is he doing? You know what I'm saying? So they kind of marveling at this. Watch this. Keep going. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou? Or Right? So they were surprised her. by it. When they say marvel, it's talking about being surprised. So they were surprised by this, but nobody, nobody said nothing about it. Right? Keep going. And the woman left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, come and see a man which told me all things that ever I did. It's right? Come and see a man who told me everything that I've ever done. Right? So now she's excited. She's freaking out like, this guy is special. So she run and tell everybody like, yo, it's this dude. He know everything I ever done. And what else? Then they went out to the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples pray, prayed him saying, master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to, uh, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Right? So now I want y'all to, I just want y'all to be like, I just want y'all to like, Put yourself in the disciples' shoes, right? Yahushua took a rest at the well and his disciples ran out to go get food. So just imagine, like, you with your mans, right? We cool. They, you know what I'm saying? Oh, There's a whole group of us, right? And we chilling. You got Yahushua in the middle. But one of the disciples looking like, Man, y'all hungry? When was the last time you ate? You ate? You ate? You ain't ate either? Anybody? Y'all hungry? Oh, grab and get us a sandwich real quick. You know what I'm saying? Just go get something real quick. You coming with me? I'll go with you. I'll walk with you. All right, for sure. Hey, y'all, sure. We'll be right back. You know what I'm saying? We're about to go grab something to eat. Everybody go off. Every, just a regular day. Everybody got to eat. We all humans, right? Y'all sure a human too. Everybody got to eat. So they go. They bring y'all sure. They get a sandwich. They bring y'all sure a sandwich too. Right? So they looking like, you know what I'm saying? We joking, laughing. <laughs> no, nah, but I'm telling you. No, nah, but no. When you, you remember when you bapped to that dude and the water got in his nose? That boy thought he was drowning. We pulled him out. There's that another. Then they walk up and then they see, and they see him talking to the Samaritan. They're looking like, yeah, he talking to Samaritan. What is he doing? Why is he talking to her? You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, when they walking up, she get up and run off, right? And she want to go tell all her Samaritan people. He looking like, they like, they, we all looking like, you know, Sam Glass. She left. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you want something to eat? Hey, bro, you want something to eat? Y'all sure just focus. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro, you want some, you want something to eat? He got something to eat. Y'all sure turn around and say. No, nah, I got some food that you don't even know about. So now we looking around like, when we just left, we was all talking about how we was hungry. Nobody had nothing to eat. So we went and grabbed you something to eat. Where did he get some food from? Read this. Watch this. Therefore said the disciples to one another, has any man brought him ought to eat? Right. Yeah. Did you bring him some food? Did you bring him? You didn't bring him nothing, right? Who brought him some food? Where he, where did he get this food from that we don't know about? Right? Because they taking him what he's saying literally. They're looking like, what? I'm just trying to offer my man a sandwich. He already got food. I could have swore we all just left because we all said that we was hungry and we going to bring him back a sandwich. So where in the world did you get food from? We was hungry. Why don't you share with us? Right? So now watch this. Yahshua said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish He said work. my food, when they say meat, remember when you say meat, it's not talking about meat like we think of meat. It's the old English. When it says meat, we is saying food. Right. So it's not talking about meat as in the flesh of an animal that's cooked or anything like that. When they say meat, it's talking about food. Right. So he said, my food is what? My food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Right. 
He said, look, I already got some food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They look like, oh, I brought this sandwich for you. I didn't, I didn't know somebody. Who, who brought you? You brought them some food? Who brought them some food? You way out here. I don't even know who brought them some food. Then y'all should have stopped and talked to him. My food is to do with the will of, uh, you know what I'm saying? Do the will of the father. All right, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you relax? All right. You know what I'm saying? Well, do the will of father. You know what I'm saying? Like, goodness gracious. I was just trying to offer you a sandwich and you got all spiritual on me. Imagine how annoying that would be. You just trying to have a regular conversation about a, a, a darn turkey sandwich. Right? A little bit of, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of, you know what I'm saying? Mustard on the end of that thing. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? Put a little bit of mustard on the end of that thing. You know what I'm saying? A little lettuce. Yeah, I'm sure you want to bite it. You know what I'm saying? It's that another. Now I already got some food. You brought him some food? Who brought him some food? We, well, we did all this walking, trying to get some food. I didn't know you had no food. Where you get some food from? My food is to do the will of the Father. <laughs> well, take it easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody relax. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay, big guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, take it easy. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all, she will focus, right? That's where his mind is. It's like, I don't care nothing about eating. I just care about getting the job done. Watch this. Keep going. They not ye, there are four yet four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are wild, they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receive wages, and garnereth the fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reaps. I sent you to reap that wherein ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of what's he talking point. about when he say that? I sent you to reap something that you didn't have to labor for. Other people labored, but you didn't have to labor. Right? What is he talking about? He's talking about John the Baptist. Right? Remember, John the Baptist was the one baptizing all of these guys. And then Yahushua didn't baptize nobody himself, but he had his disciples baptize it. So he's saying, listen, I sent all these people that came to us. They came from John the Baptist. John the Baptist has been the one cultivating and sowing, right, is what he's talking about. He's been sowing. So when they say reap and sow, it's talking about planting, right? So when you read sow, it's talking about planting. In Old English, it's, it's just basically saying you taking seed and you planting the seed into the ground and then you watering it and taking care of it. So he's saying y'all didn't have to do the work of plowing the ground. And, you know, when you plow the ground, you pretty much kind of dig like a groove into the, in the ground where you can put the seeds in it. Then you cover it up. You know what I'm saying? So that the seeds can then grow and blossom and do whatever they do. So they look, he's looking like you didn't have to plow the ground. You didn't have to plant the seeds. You didn't have to cover up the seeds. You didn't have to water them and make sure it was good. You know what I'm saying? The only thing you did is once it was all grown, you reaped it. In other words, you harvested. You took it out of the ground, cut it up, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and got the goods from it. So he's like, I sent you out to reap or harvest where somebody else sold or, you know, planted the seed, Right. I did that for you. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. Keep going. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they brought him that he would tarry with them. They besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. And many right, more. Right. So he stayed with the Samaritans two days. What happened? Read it again. And many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Messiah, the savior of the world. Now, after right. Two so days, now he, the Samarians believe he the Messiah. But look at the people that Yahushua is exposing himself to. Right. He started doing miracles and stuff around the people in Galilee. These are the people in the slums. Don't nobody respect the people in Galilee. Then the Sumerians, we, our people, don't even talk to the Sumerians. But he got the Sumerians calling them the Messiah. So Yahushua is, and then remember, he was in Judah, and all the people in Judah start coming to him. The Pharisees was like, damn, more people is going to, going to Yahushua than they are to John? John is the man. Okay, well, let's go check him out. And then Yahushua heard about that. He's like, nah, time to go. So he don't even want the people of Judah to know about him. He running from them and he runs to the Sumerians. These are Gentiles that we don't even deal with. 
Like, it's offensive to us. Be like, man, you going to Gentiles? You got Gentiles calling you the Messiah? You saw a disciple looking like, we don't deal with them. We don't, ugh. Why are you talking to her? Right? Keep going. Watch this. Or is that the end of the chapter? Mm -mm. Now, after two days, he departed from there and went into Galilee, where Yahshua himself testified that a prophet had no honor in his own country. Mm -hmm. Then, when he was coming to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he had did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. So Yahushua came again unto Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Yahushua was come out of Judah unto Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down to heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Yahushua said unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The right, so he's telling him, he looking like a lot of y'all not going to believe unless I do miracles, right? Unless I do signs and wonders. Watch this. And the nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. And Yahushua said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Yahushua had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he now, and as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son lives. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in that which Yahushua said unto him, Thy son lives, and himself believed in the whole in his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Yahushua did when he was come out of Judah into Galilee. All right. So he started to do more miracles when he went back to Galilee. And that was the second one that he did when he went back to Galilee. So after leaving Judah and going back to back Galilee, that was the second miracle that he did that the people saw. All right. So the dude, you know what I'm saying? He went to him like, look, man, I heard you be doing special stuff. I heard you did some stuff when you was in uh, Judah. Let me let me just talk to you. My son is dying. Y'all should like, your son's alive. Go on. He like, you said, I believe it. He went back. And then dude's like, yeah, man, your son, your son, he healed up quick. He like, okay, but when did he recover? What time of day? He like, about 7 o'clock. Tell you, that's exactly when I was talking to him. And he told me my son to be well. So he knew that Yahweh sure had did it. He he believed that Yahweh sure had did something special. What else we got? That was the end. Yeah, that was the end. All right, so we can stop there then. Um, next week we'll pick up. We just finished off John four, so next week we'll probably go look at Luke chapter four because now Yahweh sure is about to officially start. So this is this is the beginning. Right. This is the beginning. Technically, Yahushua didn't even like really officially right. start. You know what I'm saying? Start his ministry. You know what I'm saying? This is just he went to Passover and him him keeping Passover is what kind of set things off because he went to get baptized by John. So that kind of like he got baptized by John. Then he uh, went to Passover and that kind of just kind of set things off. Right. He 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 had to wait until he was the age of um, a Levite. Right. Age 30. Right. Before that's the age that a Levite can start to serve. So we're going to read a little bit about the beginning of his ministry and how things start to get official after this. So this is just a precursor. Everything that we read so far, just a precursor. He ain't even really got started yet. Right. He just he kind of taking it easy. So we're going to see him start to ease into it a lot more um, starting next week. Any questions? Any questions? Look like we got a couple questions. Let me see what I miss here. Um, could it be the land we conquered? Could what be the land we conquered? She was asking about um, um, thing I forgot. <laughs> yeah, so Canaan, Canaan is the land we conquered, but remember, Canaan turns into Israel. So yes, this is. Everything that we're reading about right now is the land of Canaan that we conquered, and now it became known as the land of Israel. So whenever we talk about Israel or the land of Israel, it's really, it used to be the land of Canaan. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you were saying uh, like uh, reaping and sowing. So like, yes, you were saying like um, when, uh, like just like the promised land when God was telling the children of Israel, like you get going into this land filled of milk and honey, you didn't plant vineyards, you didn't work for it, you didn't, oh, you didn't labor in any of this. 
it's the yeah. same thing with y'all shoes being our inheritance, right? Like that's why Paul said, right, not of works. Like we didn't labor for any of it. Y'all Shua, John the Baptist laid the groundwork, y'all Shua finished the work and did all the work. But we come into y'all Shua's inheritance. He is our inheritance, just like the promised land was our father's inheritance. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And then the next question is, why did he call Galilee his own country? The Galilee is where he's from. So it's just like it's just like me. I was born in LA. I even grew up, you know what I'm saying, my younger years in LA, in Southern California, different places in Southern California, Banning, Ontario, all those places. But then I've been out here since 99. So if you ask me where I'm from, if I go to another city and they say, where are you from? I'm going to say Las Vegas. I'm not going to say I'm from LA. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say I'm from Las Vegas. That's where I'm from. So in the same way, Yahushua was born in Bethlehem, but he don't remember a bit about that. Right. He was born in Bethlehem, but he moved out. And then another reason is, remember, it he Yahushua is intentionally obfuscating the fact that he is the Messiah. So if he walked around telling everybody, yo, I'm from Bethlehem, then people would connect the dots and be like, oh, maybe he is the Messiah because he lines up with scripture. So it's intentional. Right. I, that you we going we gonna make that point a lot. It is not an accident that people were not sure whether he was the Messiah or not. That is intentional. That's by design. Y'all wanted it that way, right? He purposely is hiding himself from certain people. You see, you see, he told the, 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 the lady, um, the Sumerian, he told her flat out, you're talking to the Messiah. He didn't tell Nicodemus that. You remember the guys that uh, when, he is, when he is turning over the table, they asked, they was like, show us a sign that, you know what I'm saying, you got the authority to do these things. He could have said right there, I'm the Messiah. I'm the son of man that came from, you know what I'm saying, came from the clouds. But he didn't intentionally because he doesn't want certain people to know. Right? He needs it to be ambiguous. Otherwise, you know what I'm saying, things are not going to play out the way Yahuwah want them to play out. <clears throat> so, yeah, Galilee is his country, um, and that's why he's saying it that way. And Galilee is still in Israel. Yep, Galilee is northern Israel. This is Galilee is like where uh, the Naphtali. tribe Naphtali and uh, Zebulun were. You know what I'm saying? Those are our brothers in the north. Any other questions? Yeah, he's making he's yeah, he's making it more of a mystery for Israel. And the Sumerian woman is an example of him revealing himself to a Gentile. Yeah, I think about it from y'all point of view. He's always revealed himself to us and made himself hidden or a mystery to the Gentiles. We then, you know what I'm saying, made a mess of his commandments. And so the whole point of what Yahushua is doing now is he's saying, okay, well, you uh, you know what I'm saying, y'all, y'all didn't uh y'all didn't accept me, y'all didn't, you know what I'm saying, y'all rejected my word, y'all rejected my law. So remember our law. Grab before we get out of here. Grab, uh, grab Deuteronomy. Uh, I don't know why I don't know this by heart. I struggle with it every time. It's time to go to it. It's Deuteronomy. Is it thirty-one? Is it thirty-one. <laughs> is it thirty-one nine? Give me Deuteronomy thirty-one nine. This ain't it. I gotta cheat. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying at the end of every seven years, in the solemn, solemnity. Nah, give me. Solemnity. Let me just cheat. Yeah. Let me just cheat. Let's see. 3221. Goodness gracious. This is. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. 
21. They have so moved. This is in our law. Forward. Sorry. This this is in our law. This is before this this is before we even got into the land. This is what Yah promised us. He told us it would be this way. It's before we even got into the land. It's right in our law. Right there, clear. This is part of the deal we signed in blood, right? Watch this. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I, I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Right? So because we worshiped other gods and we had all this vanity and all this stuff that we worshiped as God, the most high God already told us because you did that. Now I'm going to move you to jealousy. You made me jealous because you serve another God. Now I'm going to make you jealous because I'm going to take a people. That's not really a people. They are foolish people. And I'm going to make them think they my people. Right. So now you have the Samaritan, the Samarians, right? That was the first instance of it where the, the king of Assyria replaced our people with Samarians and they started to believe that they were us. So that's why she's in there saying our father, our fathers worshiped here and all this different stuff because they think they us. Right. So now that's why we don't even deal with them. People like, man, you ain't got nothing to do with this stuff. I don't know why y'all think y'all us. Y'all don't have nothing to deal with. That's why they wanted to build our temple in Ezra. That's why they wanted to help with the wall in Nehemiah, because they thought they was us, but they're not. So it's like, no, 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 you ain't got nothing to do with this. Stay away from it. So we're being moved to jealousy now because guess what? Now they the ones running around saying Messiah. This is the Messiah, right? And then that increases. Then the next instance of it is what's going on today. You got Jewish people literally in the land of Canaan, right? Literally in the land of Israel right now that believe whole, a lot of them believe wholeheartedly that they descendants of, 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 uh, uh, descendants of, uh, descendants of Israel are descendants of Abraham. Right. When it's like, no, you're not right. And clearly you're not. You even like if you thought about it a little bit, you would know you're not. Right. But that is it. And what does it do for us who learn who we are? It moves us to jealousy. Like, man, y'all in our land. We supposed to be in that land. God, when you going, you know, what I'm saying straighten this stuff out for us. Right. But that's because we moved him to jealousy. So that's that's what's about to happen right now is Yah is about to make a spectacle by first coming to our people making it very ambiguous who he is, our people are, are about to reject him. Then when he gets rejected, he's going to tell the, uh, the disciples, starting at Jerusalem, go preach, preach the world, I mean, the word to the whole world. And then Paul is one of the ones that starts to preach to the Gentiles. Uh, Peter does it first, though, but Paul kind of takes the most of the brunt of preaching it to the Gentiles, and then all the Gentiles get it. Or not get it, but all the Gentiles get exposed to it. So that 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 is exactly what Yah's plan is: is to move us to jealousy, and He's doing that in a lot of ways, right? He does it with Islam, right? These are all Islam is Gentiles, all these Arabs, Gentiles, but they think they serve in our God. They looking at our book, right? You got um, Christians, Catholicism, all that. Again, Gentiles. But they think they serve in our book. They think they got the authority of they they teaching us, they teaching God's people, they religion. Just crazy, right? You got the Jewish people, they think they us, right? They think the Christians got something called replacement theology, where they think they replacing us. And they so confused, they think they replacing the Jewish people, but they think the Jewish people are us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like all this stuff is just a darn mess. But that's why he said, I'll, I'll move you to jealousy with a foolish nation because none of these people know what they're talking about. And they all wholeheartedly believe what they believe, and none of them know what they're talking about. That's why it's important for us to get all this stuff out of our head, do a full audit of what we believe, and only look at the book. None of this other stuff. Obey it. Take it serious. Change your behavior based off of it. Hold a level of integrity like, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. Why? Because my book tell me not to let these people call you stupid. Let them call you silly. Let them call you foolish. Let them call you whatever they're going to call you. Because I guarantee one day they're going to look at you and be like, surely he was a man of God or surely he was a woman of God. I guarantee it. It ain't no other way to do it. 
all these people got to confess. All we got to do is stay strong. It looked like that's all the questions. So let's pray out. Anybody to join the call, we'll talk tomorrow.